This video is brought to you by our friends at Gorilla Car Care, a premium detailing product at an affordable price and your classic car or truck's best friend for maintaining a showroom shine. Go to GorillaCarCare.com today. Can inspiration make the simple act of driving around extraordinary? Yes. Can substance and style blend seamlessly together? Clearly. And can the car of your dreams be an affordable reality? Absolutely. The 150 mile per hour performance tested Chrysler Crossfire. Lease one for only $2.99 a month if you're a well qualified lessee. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Hey everybody, we've got a great video for you today because we are taking a look at one of the most hated cars of the early 2000s, the Chrysler Crossfire, a car that Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear famously hated to a large extent. He famously said, Brendan, what about the design? He said that it looked like a dog pooping from behind. That it, uh, you know, when the dog is arching its back, like it's taking a dump, that that's what this car looks like from behind. And well, um, I kind of disagree. I think that the back end actually looks pretty striking. It's very different from any other car design out there. And I kind of dig it. Well, here's what we're gonna do in this video, right? I understand that when this car was new, especially in the UK, it probably didn't make a lot of sense. But in this video, we're gonna prove Jeremy Clarkson wrong some 20 years later, now that these, these things have become used and super cheap, and discuss why these are actually pretty cool cars that could make a fun, affordable classic for not a lot of money. So let's talk about the Crossfire, Brendan. Let's come on over to the front. Sure. Because this was peak Daimler era of Chrysler when Mercedes, um, you know, was pulling a lot of the strings at the company. And this car has a sibling. Yeah, so this is based on the first generation Mercedes SLK, uh, which that actually debuted in 1996. And I think it's kind of an interesting decision because this car didn't come out until 2004. But in 2005, the second generation Mercedes SLK came out. So they must have already had that design done and ready to go when they said, all right, Chrysler, you go ahead, you can, you can have the old one and we'll put out the new one. Now I've talked to some colleagues at Chrysler um, about what it was like working in the Daimler years. And I always get the same response. It was working with sloppy seconds. Mercedes never wanted to give Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, they never wanted to give any of the good stuff to these companies. They always viewed them as inferior. And even talking to some engineers, like you couldn't just pick up a phone and call a colleague in Germany about, you know, an engine. It was just this weird hierarchy. And, you know, Mercedes always wanted to be a step above Chrysler, even though they were working within the same company it was just ridiculous so what Brendan's saying is the second gen SLK was done cooked by the time this car came out and yet Chrysler engineers still had to work with the first gen SLK platform which was going on 10 years old by the time that this car hit the market however let's talk about the styling and I'm gonna take the camera Brendan because I think that the SLK was a pretty dumpy looking car. Yeah. And I think the Crossfire, especially from the front, was a really cool looking car. Yeah, I think that they took that kind of dumpy, boring looking convertible from Mercedes and they added some flair to it. You know, I mean, you've got these really long, you know, what do you call them? Like little divots going through. Streaks. Or, uh, streaks going down the center of the uh, the hood here. And Looks then, like a yacht, Brendan. Yeah, it does you know? kind of look like a yacht. And the thing that I like too is that you've got one in the middle that starts right at the Chrysler emblem, goes all the way down and even continues onto the roof of the car that gives it kind of like, like, like a mohawk. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a really interesting design as well as these side strakes and then they've got really big wheels as well on the side. I mean, when um, you consider yeah. that realistically Chrysler probably didn't have the budget they wanted to develop this car. No. After understanding what was going on in the Daimler years, they did some fantastic things with the first gen SLK. This really crisp body line on the side, the way it contours toward the haunches in the back, uh, this kind of contrasting silver. Uh, like you mentioned, Brendan, you got these 18 inch wheels, which was pretty good for like the early 2000s. And then you come to the rear, which admittedly from that angle is not great, but you know, head on, it's not a bad looking rear end. I think it's pretty good. And plus you've got that center mounted dual exhaust, uh, which, you know, this car isn't a super high performance car, 
but it kind of looks like it with that center mounted exhaust. And then this even has the deployable rear wing too. She's got some hips to crossfire. Yeah. Let's be honest. Look, when you live in a land like we do, where everything nowadays is that, you know, CRV, Ford Edge, RAV4, everything's basically the same old crossover in another blob compared to a different blob. This is interesting. Exactly. You know, love it or hate it, the Crossfire has a super unique look. And they were also available in two different body configurations. Well, yeah, you could get the coupe like this, or they also came in a convertible. One other uh, uh, styling thing I wanted to point out too, a lot of cars nowadays are doing this where they have the name of it in big letters spaced out so it takes off a lot of the back. They were doing this in 2004, so it was a little bit ahead of its time. Uh, but they also had an SRT version of this back when you know, Chrysler was doing everything in SRT. They had an SRT6 version of this, yeah. which uh, those were pretty good. I think they had a supercharged V6 under the hood of those. Well, why don't you pop the hood on this one? This is just the standard Crossfire. Now, when we're talking platform sharing, the engine in this vehicle is the same as the uh, SLK. Um, not like the, well, we'll talk about it in a sec, but the, the V6 SLK. So this is a yeah. 3.2 liter. Yeah, so this had the 3.2 liter V6, which you know, it wasn't super powerful. If I can figure out how to open a hood, there we go. It wasn't super powerful. Gosh, even look at that styling right on here. I think that's kind of cool. But this put out about 215 horsepower to the rear wheels. And it's, this car is fairly light, so that may not sound like a lot, but if you kind of think of this as like a, what, like a Miata and a tuxedo, so a little bit heavier than a Miata with a little more power than a Miata, it's, it's in there, right? Imagine being in the deep heart of Texas, <laughs> buying this brand new MSRP 35 grand, some five grand less than the uh, SLK, by the way, starting. And then you're like, got myself an American Chrysler. <laughs> and then you see this, Vorsicht! Uberdruch cool system. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, so like, there's obvious Mercedes influences in here because the powertrain is the 3.2 liter Mercedes engine that they used in so many vehicles, just plopped right into this Chrysler. And I bet if we start poking at stuff, I don't want to break that. There we go. Oh man, that's all connected. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can see the intake, all all of that is the same as what you'd find on a Mercedes. Uh, even on the uh, intake tubes here, it says Mercedes-Benz. This is a proper Mercedes motor. Now we got to put it back together. We just Brenda. disconnected the intake there, Tony. It's there pretty cool. Look at that. So the air box is actually built in to that, that cover. You could see it underneath there. That was pretty cool. But essentially, you were getting a Mercedes, if you want to look at it this way, yeah. for five grand less. Yeah, for a lot less money. And, you know, they're... Mercedes back then, they were building decently reliable vehicles, right? They weren't super reliable. They weren't very unreliable either. So you did get a fairly reliable vehicle that's got some fun to drive and something that doesn't look like anything else out on the road. Well, okay. It was kind of the dark era of Mercedes. Was it? So Mercedes was really good in the 70s and the 80s. They were building cars that would never die, so much so that no one was replacing them. So they almost went out of business in the 90s. Um, yeah. uh, I shouldn't say go out of business, but they were struggling. <laughs> so their solution, starting to cut costs, starting to, you know, you know, tighten some, some things here and there. What you ended up with was like the, the, the Mercedes ML, the first gen. But right. if, you th if you think about like some of the forced induction Mercedes engines from that oh, era. Oh yeah, the 3.2 is solid. Know, those were very problematic compared to yeah. the 3.2. Yeah, it's, look, the car may not be super well made. The engine's gonna be quite reliable. Yeah. All right, you wanna take the camera? We'll hop inside and show some of the Mercedes bits and bobs because at first look, especially on the outside, almost no way to, to know that this is a Mercedes. And then you start looking around and some things start seeing a little peculiar. For example, this key, right? It's got the Chrysler logo, but if you look at the way it's laid out, that is the same key I had on my first generation Mercedes ML. Look at this, this little window switch. That right, or the mirror switch, that right there, that is not a Chrysler mirror switch. That is straight out of the uh, um, SLK. And then this is my favorite, these little switches across the dash, they look bespoke because they're painted silver, but Brendan, they're not. 
Yeah, they're actually straight out of an SLK. So if you were to look at the interior of that first generation SLK, you'll notice that those switches are exactly the same, except they're black. Uh, and even the radio is straight out of a Mercedes product as well. Yeah, m radio is Mercedes. The whole layout is pretty similar, but like stuff like this, right? No Chrysler, I'm gonna tell you that, had left and right parking lights back in 2004. Uh, this is a Mercedes switch panel. Same thing with the vents, door handle. That's Mercedes Z stocks. If you're familiar with Mercedes cruise control, that's all gonna look very familiar. Steering wheel's a little different. Gauges are a little different. Seats are a little different. Well, didn't you say this too? It was basically the same glove box. It's just the, the uh, handle that opens it up was square on the SLK, but otherwise it was identical. It's round. And the other thing too, which is interesting, let me find that little sticker here. Um, this vehicle is actually manufactured abroad. This was not made in the U.S. Here we go. Manufactured by Daimler Chrysler Corporation, assembled by Wilhelm Carmen GmbH. Carmen sounds familiar. You know what Carmen is? Carmen Ghia? There you go. So wow. I think that's the same exact Carmen. Nice. All right. Well, I'll let you take the camera. I'm going to take this thing for a spin with you next to me, and we're going to see if it's as dreadful as Jeremy Clarkson says it is to drive. I also really like these uh, sill plates, Tommy. They say crossfire. There's a lot of cool little details. Sure, like this interior panel. Here, I can take that for you, Brendan. This panel across the dash looks amazing. It feels cheap. Yes. You know, they should have made this out of at least some aluminum components. These like knobs are really cool. Once again, they feel pretty cheap. Oh man, <laughs> there we go. Um, but still, like it's a cool looking interior. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things too where you're kind of expecting to feel like metal here. Even on the shift knob, you kind of expect to feel metal, but it's it's all fake. But it's look at, plastic. Look at look how short those throws are. Look at that. Look at that. First to second. It's like a couple inches. Yeah. And then I love this. We got to show this. I thought that was a phone holder because look at that. It like boop fits perfectly an iPhone. Right. But you pointed out. I think that's a cup holder. That right there's a cup holder. I would never have guessed. Yeah. I mean, it can maybe hold a can, but. <laughs> now Jeremy complained that this car didn't handle very well, and that it was kind of wishy-washy in the turn. But what you gotta understand is we live in America. To go from my house in Boulder to Phoenix, Arizona is a thousand miles, 1600 kilometers. And I think there's a total of seriously four or five turns, right? You go left yeah. in Denver, you go right at Albuquerque, and then you're in Phoenix. Yeah, it's just a bunch of getting on the highway, sitting in cruise control, and just bombing down the highway at 75 miles an hour for hours and hours on end. So for our market, honestly, I don't really want my car to be that stiff because for a car like this, which is supposed to be kind of like a luxury oriented daily driver of sorts, why does it need to be super stiff? You know, I'm just commuting into work or I'm going straight down a US interstate and it's not like it's made out of mashed potatoes. Like it should probably still handle okay if you want to push it, but it's just a different use case here in the States. Yeah, I mean, not to mention these are, because they've got so much hate, they're pretty inexpensive as well. And so you can pick up a really stylish, striking looking, sports car for not a lot of money and uh you're getting onto the test track here i see so test track is bold it's a strip of, <laughs> strip of acceleration pavement <laughs> yeah. oh look it's all dirty today oh man okay should we see how she accelerates six Let's speed see. manual Woo! it's brisk it's brisk yeah it's not too bad it's not horrible yeah i mean it doesn't make any noise you can't hear the engine not that you really want to hear that v6 but i don't actually like this is a fun car to drive if you're used to driving minivans and crossovers and that's all you do this is going to be like amazingly fun if you're used to driving um mx5 miata club editions yes it's going to be a bit of a boat but uh you know it's it's better than a lot of the stuff i've driven recently brendan it's still a fun fun front engine manual transmission rear wheel drive car yeah i just i think that these are an incredible value right now and even though you have all this plasticky interior and even though they're not super fast they're not super loud i think there's still a place for them this car too you can pick them up for five to seven grand for a pretty good one yeah um let's take out the trunk here i'll take the camera do you want to show off the trunk here sure because i think it was open during our test drive Oh, was it flopping around back flopping there? Flopping around a little bit. Well, we got to show the, the rear wing too. I don't know how you deploy it. So know? here, I can show you. Hang so, on, let me, let me see the trunk space first. Did you open it? Yeah. Oh, it's huge. That is actually, you could fit a couple of golf bags in there. Look at all think? the space. All right, how do you deploy the wing? 
So let's see if it, well, here's the big question too, is if it still works, right? Because uh, it was fairly problematic because it's a very early version of these deployable wings, but there's actually a button on the center, I believe it's this guy right here. Okay. Where you push it and it'll deploy, it should deploy the wing. Oh, is it coming look up? at that. Oh yeah. So Brandon. you could put it in show off mode right there. And now it doesn't look like a squatting dog. It looks much better. Yeah, you just kind of broke up the design there and gave it a little bit of a rear wing and you show off to your friends. So was Jeremy wrong about the Chrysler Crossfire, Brendan? I think he was wrong. I get it at the time, at early 2000s, you had a plethora of options when it comes to sports cars. But nowadays when you're on a budget and you're looking for something that's sporty and fun to drive, it's it's a good option. I agree completely. You know, if you want to spend six, seven grand, and you want something a little different that looks pretty unique, heck, I would check out the Chrysler Crossfire over a Mercedes SLK. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Way better looking. Yeah, I mean, you're basically getting the same car. I think literally 80% of the Mercedes SLK made it onto the Chrysler Crossfire. And the only reason why 20% of it isn't here is just because the body panels are different. So it's literally like the same car. I've heard that you can even pull the seats out of an SLK and they'll bolt directly into one of these. So you're getting the exact same car, a very similar experience, but a much more interesting design. Well, let us know what you guys think of the Crossfire in the comments section below. As always, it's been Tommy and Brendan. If you want to, um, you know, find some great cars at low prices and you're a dealer, where should they go? Where are we at, Brendan? Uh, well, we're here out at Dealer's Auto Auction of the Rockies. And this is kind of my regular stomping grounds where I take a look for cars that I want to buy. Yeah, that's right. At least for your dealer. Yes. <laughs> you need the well, dealer's yeah. license. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been Tommy. And Brendan. We'll see you on the next video.